Victoria Derby winner for the year 2001. As we watch him stride to the line, we'll come back to Flemington after the break with all the details on the Derby. We're back. And we're after correct weight, which seems to be a fair complete. There's young D. Beedman there. We wait for the raised hand. And there it is. Correct weight. Weight is right on the Amy Victoria Derby for 2001. And there is another champion to add to the honour roll of marvellous sporters that have won this race. Amalfi. How many times have you seen it happen? They say it's a race in two. And it doesn't happen. All right. Danny Malecki, you can pay us some money. Certainly, Tim. Amalfi, 570 and 160. His home state is Queensland. He was just a little bit of unders there, $5.60. Zarek, $11.40 the place on Super Tab. Pentastic at $14.30. And if you could snare some of the exotic bets, you get a handsome return. Quinella, $178.40. Exact at $360.40. Trifecta, $5,819.30. Running double, $136.20. So, three seven nine fourth in the derby was Eustonov. He never really looked a factor. And uh, Sir Khan de Mont battled away into fourth. And it is correct weight the time, 2.34. Point six. So Amelfi D. Oliver, the Oliver factor getting up, but a big flop, the two favourites there, Tim. Very much so. Eustonov certainly didn't never travelled like a favourite or a winner, may I say, Dan. But Amelfi, although there was specking for Amelfi midway through betting, most bookmakers return re reckon it was a great result. Amelfi winning was another win for the bookies. So let's make that six out of six. The Bagmen are having a pretty good day against we desperate punders. Let's move over to the seventh. It gets harder again. We get back to a big race with lots of chances. It is each way odds the field. They do believe though that in a flurry and universal prints will open up equal favorites in this peak not really any easier from now on tim gossage six out of six for the bookmakers and they are going to be able to afford that holiday that we spoke about all year next year if they want to jen i think oh for sure and uh, what about the two favorites had a bumping jewel down the straight there yeah um uh, Pentastic wasn't all that lucky either. Yep. It was a good run, but... Um, Tully yeah. Zeal copped a bit of interference as well, so... Um, a surprise result and a, an excellent result for Peter Moody. Let's have a look at the totes for the McKinnon Stakes, the thrifty McKinnon Stakes, and as we do, give us your thoughts. Well, I'm going to go with number six, Universal Prince. He loves the dry track, Peter. I'm willing to forgive him for one bad run. A lot of these good horses, you do have to do that. Number nine, Hill of Grace, was a terrific run in the Caulfield Cup. She was running on strongly there. I think she's going better than she was last year. And number 11, Cinderbella. Third. Yeah, I've gone for Cinderella, but I'll tell you one horse there, number two, Carpstad Way, at $5.10. Now, Chris Wood would have uh, come out to the track and walked it here, and he would have been doing a dance of joy when he got to the track here, because this is just the way that Carpstad Way needs it. Yes, well, the Caulfield Cup, of course, was rain-affected, yeah. and uh, now he gets his chance on the dry track. And, uh, yes, he's a very classy type of horse. Cinderella at $9.40. You can see Hill of Grace in a flurry, certainly in the betting there, and a race of many chances as Tim Gossage has already mentioned. $1.26 million in the wind pool and almost $800,000. They are the super tab pools for the thrifty McKinnon Stakes. The next of our Group 1 features here at Flemington. And let's hope we can find a winner because it has been just about impossible so far. It was easy to have a Melfi in the top three, but it was tough beforehand to see him beating the other two. Hindsight tells us that maybe we should have paid a bit more credit to D. Oliver. Well, yes, Damien, as we said before, he's just riding in sensational form and in those close finishes, Peter, as you said, he just pushes their head down. I think that's something he learnt when he was riding overseas. Yes, he did. A lot of the English jockeys push the horse's head down and, of course, the close photo finish makes a big, big difference. We spoke about the scars that Viscount may have had after the Cox Plate. Perhaps that was the difference. Maybe it was just the run that flattened him. Well, we'll find out over the next couple of days. Yes, we'll just have to wait and see. Time now for the official presentation after the 147th running of the Amy Victoria Derby. Here's our Master of Ceremonies, Rob Gaylard. Yes, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and welcome once again. A thrilling finish to the Amy Derby and it uh, gives me great pleasure to ask Mrs. Uh, Linda Keane, the wife, of course, of the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Amy, Mr. Brian Keane, to present the uh, winning sash to the owners. Linda, thank you very much. While she's doing that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the VRC, Mr. Andrew Ramston.